Um, <clears throat> when it comes to sexuality, it appears that autistic people are less likely to be heterosexual than neurotypical people. Of course, um, this doesn't mean that there aren't, you know, heterosexual autistics. There definitely are. Um, but by not being heterosexual, I'm just going to explain this. This includes like being homosexual, bisexual, pansexual, asexual, all of those. Um, there was a 2018 study done that showed only 30% of autistic people identified as heterosexual, whereas 70% of neurotypical participants identified as heterosexual. In this one specific study, only 8% of the autistic AFAB participants identified as heterosexual. I looked up other studies done and the percentage of AFAB heterosexuals was higher, but I just found it fascinating that there was a study done where only 8% of the AFAB autistics were straight. <clears throat> so um, one possibility as to why autistics are less likely to be straight was brought up by a senior researcher at Tilburg University in the Netherlands named Geron de Winter, who speculates that it's possible that autistic people just come to different conclusions when it comes to their sexuality. He said that autistics have been more willing to identify as bisexual after a single same-sex sexual experience, but that neurotypicals may be less likely to take on that label of bisexual after only one such experience. Much like with gender, it may be that autistics are more open to embracing labels that we identify with despite any shame society may put on us. Autistics may just be less willing to remain in the closet. Another thing that may be a factor into why we're less likely to identify as straight is that autistics are less likely to be concerned with their partner's gender identity. We're less likely to be bothered by our partners being gender diverse. So we're more open to identify as something other than straight. Um, something that I found really interesting was that in Sweden, there was a public health survey called the AQ10 survey, which screened for autistic traits. And one of the questions asked was whether the person considered themselves heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, or none of the above. 19.1% or almost one fifth of those who had autistic traits selected none of the above, which is almost three times higher than the 6.8% of those who didn't have autistic traits. Autistics appear to be more often thinking outside of the box when it comes to our own sexual orientation. You know, we're less likely to be straight, gay, or bisexual or go beyond that sort of thing. Unfortunately, um, since autistics are more often infantilized, we face our sexualities being labeled as us just going through a phase or us just being confused. There are even those who view autistics as being so child-minded that were unable to consent to sexual relationships and believe that having a sexual relationship with an autistic person is immoral. Then there are the autistics who, when their children are forced to be so focused on how to socially interact with others, quote unquote, 
properly, usually through ABA, that they don't take the time to do much self-reflection. So they don't realize that their sexual orientation, what their sexual orientation is until later in life. Um, there's also a stereotype that all autistics are asexual, which is very much not true. While autistics are slightly more likely to identify as asexual or a subgroup of asexual, such as demisexual or graysexual, autistics are also more likely to be hypersexual. For some autistics, sex is literally a special interest for them. Uh, for those who don't know what demisexual or graysexual mean, Demisexual is when, sorry, <clears throat> is when someone only experiences sexual attraction once they formed a strong emotional bond with another person. And gray sexual is when a person experiences sexual attraction very rarely or with very low intensity. And then, of course, there's being aromantic. People who are aromantic feel little to no romantic attraction. Doesn't mean that they're asexual, though. Those are two different things. You can be asexual and not aromantic, and you can be aromantic and not be asexual. You can also be both. <clears throat> and much like every other sexual orientation outside of heterosexuality, it seems autistics have a higher rate of being aromantic than neurotypicals. I can't really find much information when it comes to being autistic and aromantic because very little research has been done. It seems that aromance isn't a much look into topic. Um, a much looked into topic, which is disappointing. The more information out there about these subjects, um, the easier it is for people to realize what and who they are.